Hi, and welcome back to Grassroots Crypto, where I like to teach people about crypto. Forchain Synthetics is going to go live this week, so I'm going to do a video on it. Synthetics will be live in ChaosNet by the time you're watching this. In this video, I'll do a quick refresher on what synthetics are, and then I'll show you examples using real funds with an interface. If you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe. And like always, all the links used in this episode will be in the description below. If you don't know about synths, they're really cool. So in short, they represent an asset like BDC or Ethereum. It has the same value of that asset. So one synthetic Bitcoin has the same value as one actual Bitcoin. One synthetic Ethereum has the same value as one actual Ethereum. This is guaranteed by the network. You're guaranteed if you've got, say, one synthetic um, Ethereum, that it's going to be redeemed back to one Ethereum minus, you know, fees and stuff like that. They're much cheaper to deal with, easier with swapping, withdrawing, and transferring, and so on. But we'll go through that. How this works is a bit complex, and I cover all of the complex details in my four-part synthetic series, particularly uh, part three, if you want to know the intricate details about how that works. And also, I'll leave some links to other articles below. Upon launch, since we'll be capped to 5% of the pool depth as a precaution, as this hasn't been done before, and that'll be lifted to about 16.5% over time. So let's go through uh, a diagram of the main use cases for synthetics. So firstly, uh, if I zoom in here, with ThorChain you have connected chains and then you also have its own blockchain. So each chain like has a wallet, if you think about it like that, and so does the ThorChain blockchain. So when you join um, or you connect a wallet to something like ThorChain, you have all these wallets, um, like a multi-coin wallet uh, with you and you decide which one you want to connect with. Different assets live in different wallets, so to speak. So within, when you mint a, uh, a synthetic, when you create a synthetic, whatever, you're going to be exchanging Rune for an actual synthetic asset here. So you use Rune to mint um, synthetic Ethereum, synthetic um, BDC, synthetic Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, whatever it may be. But note that, you know, using native Rune within your Thor wallet that lives on the, um, on the Thor chain blockchain in order to mint that. And then that synthetic asset lives inside of the same Thor wallet. So it, it's not living on the actual blockchain or the actual uh, external blockchain. It's living on the Thor chain blockchain. And this is done through a normal, we can think of it as a normal swap. It's called a mint, but you're essentially exchanging Rune to Ethereum. And this would be the same exchange kind of ratio as if this was, was Rune to normal Ethereum. When you redeem that, essentially you're, you're changing, you're swapping the synthetic back to Rune. Um, you're, you're taking that synthetic asset from your Thor wallet and you're exchanging that for um, the, the equivalent of Rune. And again, the, this will be, um, be guaranteed by the network to have the, the same value of whatever amount of Ethereum you had. So if this was two Ethereum, you would get the two Ethereum worth of Rune when you redeem. So that's just how it, it works for minting and redeeming. So let's go have a look um, at an actual example. And I've got a wallet connected uh, that has real funds in it. Let's go ahead and mint some uh, synthetic BDC. So um, I've got a bit of rune here. Uh, and then you'd go and click here. And they got this nice little filter for synths. So you can do like native ERC, whatever. So you want synthetics. And we're going to go ahead to synthetic BDC. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do just a little bit, um, noting this is stage net, so the slip will be much higher than what it would be inside of um, or inside of CastNet. You put your password in, and then it will go ahead and mint um, that one there. So the rune's gone in, and we should get it back out. So if I go ahead and, and look at my wallet, so look at my wallet, um, if I go show all tokens, I can see I've got now my synthetic BDC. And as you talked about, it's sitting inside of the ThorChain wallet. So we can go ahead and redeem that um, and get the rune back. So we'll just, um, we'll go ahead and actually we'll go here, click here, synthetic. And we'll go ahead and swap our synthetic back to native rune. So we'll go ahead and we say, oh, look, I want all of it. That should give us about the same amount back. Um, minus fees and you can see all the fees are displayed here 
and then that'll go ahead and redeem. So we've minted from Rune and we've redeemed back to Rune. You can go to wallet over here and then um, press refresh and you should get an update. If not, if that's not working, you can actually update the individual chain. That's the normal minting Rune and then redeeming with um, back to Rune. Now, note that swaps get a 50% slip fee reduction as opposed to normal assets. So Rune to normal Ethereum would cost, well, I guess, double um, the amount then going from room to um, synthetic where you can think about synthetic actually gets a 50% discount much faster confirmation time because it's all on the Thorchain blockchain it's not requiring an external chain and, and using the confirmation time eg with um, synthetic BDC it would happen in five seconds instead of like 10 minutes 20 minutes depending on the conf counting and the outbound fee, which can be quite high, particularly for ERC20s and stuff like that, will be um, only 0.02 Rune. So get that times by the price of Rune and you'll see it's like, you know, in the low cents. So not everybody's going to want to have like Rune and swapping Rune for um, a synthetic. So it is possible to go from asset to synthetic directly where you have real Ethereum and you mint that directly to synthetic Ethereum. And that's gonna come from your Ethereum wallet through to the Thorchain wallet. Same, same with Bitcoin, straight through to synthetic Bitcoin, Luna, Doge, like whatever else. Um, then you can go back the other way. So you're gonna have your synthetic Ethereum that's gonna be in your uh, Thorchain wallet or synthetic Bitcoin. And then that can go directly back to the actual real Bitcoin uh, or real BTC, real Ethereum, e.g. the real asset. Now with this, there's no Rune, which is really good. You're not having to worry about Rune or anything like that in this process, but it's a double swap because what's really doing is going Ethereum back to Rune and then Rune to um, Ethereum. First part is the same as uh, the redemption over here, then it's doing a normal asset swap from Rune to Ethereum in the background or Rune to the asset here. Right, so that's minting, redeeming from Rune and to Rune, and then that's minting and redeeming directly from assets, like not having to worry about Rune. And then you can have swapping, just direct swapping uh, for synthetics. That's going to go from synth Rune to synth BDC. All right, so now we're going to swap from native Ethereum to um, synthetic Ethereum. So if I go ahead and go to uh, um, native uh, Ethereum, go find it, and then we're going to go to um synthetic ethereum here and then i'm gonna if i do max this slip's going to be um very high because i'm staging it so i'm just going to adjust my uh slip tolerance and then bring that down uh to something more reasonable um else it's not going to work so if we do this here then that's going to be swapping native ethereum through to synthetic ethereum see all the fees here which obviously vary over time. Excellent, so that's worked. And if I go to my uh, wallet, move over to my wallet, then I go to uh, Thorchain, I might just refresh this. Um, should update, you can see that I've got uh, some synthetic assets here. I already had some before through some previous testing, long story. Um, but yeah, I've got some synthetic assets here. Right, so now I could go the other way. I could, for some reason, um, immediately get my uh, synthetic Ethereum and then swap that for uh, native Ethereum for, for some unknown reason. I don't know why you would do that. Um, I could do that. And if I went max, then that would be the deal um, that I'll be looking at. So I would need to wind that back a little bit. But I don't want to do that. I want to swap my synthetic Ethereum through to um, synthetic Bitcoin to demonstrate, I guess this is the power of synthetics once it's in for um, for trading, for, for quick confirmations, for uh, speed, uh, low cost, and all that type of stuff. So Understanding that this is a stage net, not um, chaos net, so you're not going to have these uh, enormous slips. But I'm going to go ahead and move Ethereum to Bitcoin, and this is going to should happen in like five seconds odd for a cost of 18 cents, um, which is just amazing. So let's go ahead and do that now, um, and it should take less than five seconds. So that's happening now. One, two, three, four, five. You can see with ThorSwap, the, the synthetic Ethereum's gone in, and now we've got to get the uh, synthetic BDC back, and that is it. So there you go, I've moved um, native Ethereum to synthetic Ethereum, then move that synthetic Ethereum through to um, uh, synthetic Bitcoin. Uh, very quick, very cheap, very easy, and I haven't had to touch Rune. Like, 
I've got Rune in my wallet, obviously, but I didn't have to worry about it. Double swaps happen behind the scenes. Um, everything's just really nice, simple, and quick, and uh, low cost. So there you have it. Um, just as a summary, synths in general are uh, simple, faster, and cheaper than dealing with the real assets, but they still give you the same price exposure to the actual assets themselves. There were two interfaces that support synths, uh, ThorSwap that I've used, as well as Brooker. There will be initial cap of the pool depth um, as a bit of a precautionary measure because it hasn't been done before and then it'll slowly increase over time. Activation of the synths is the first important step in ThorFi and there's much more to come. Watch my videos on synth series to learn more and I've got links to other articles in the description below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and links to more information will be in the description below. Until next time, thanks.